Hello, you wonderful people. It's Grandpa Hickory saying hello to all from Texas. Takes both hands to wave to all my subscribers. I have so many of them. I'm so proud of you, good people. You really honor me and humble me. This video today is on, uh, I've had a lot of requests for this. I've been asked a lot of questions along these lines, and uh, so I'm making a video on it. It's called The Three Stages of Death and Dying. Now, in the first stage, uh, if your spouse has cancer, is going through all kinds of chemotherapy, uh, in the first stage is you're running from one doctor to the other, one oncologist to the other. You're going to clinics. You're going to surgeons. You're going in the hospital, in the waiting room, walking the floors, and praying for your loved one. You're going through all of this. Uh, this is the dying stage. Then you have all these CAT scans and all these other kind of multiple scans that doctors make so many multi-millions of dollars a year. Don't help anybody in doing so. But any anyway, road, we won't go there right now. And uh, you're, you are filled with apprehension. And you want your spouse well, your loved one. You want them well. And you're praying. You're all tore up. You walk the floors. You pray and talk to God. Your stomach is tore up. You have trouble eating. And you're going through it. You're going to doctor's offices. If, she, uh, if they are in a wheelchair, then you've got to go through all of loading them in a wheelchair and taking them. Uh, when they start really getting sicker and sicker, then you have to do everything. The cleaning, the bathing. Uh, if, they're, <clears throat> if they can eat, you can feed them and give them water. And if not, you've got to pick them up out of the bed and put them over in the potty chair. They have a potty chair that they give to people that are dying. And... Uh, it's beside the bed, and you put them on the potty chair, and you help them, and you have to take care of them. It's part of being a caregiver. It's just things we have to go through in life. And no, sir, no, no, ma'am, I'm not being morbid. I'm not being negative. This video is informative. I'm educating you. I've been through it. Been there and done that. Didn't get no t-shirt. The doctors did along with all the other money they got. But I got nothing but a dead wife. That's all I got out of it. So any road, you're all tore up and you're running from one hospital to the other. Uh, the loved one's condition gets worse and worse and worse and worse. You don't know what to do. You keep going from one hospital to the other. And whatever insurance you have, they have a point where they stop you. And you'll see what I'm talking about. They will cut you off. They'll stop you. And they say, okay, bring them into the hospital. You take them in the hospital. They're in bed. They might be in there two. They might be in there three weeks. And then you come in. They take you in a separate room and say, we're going to have to start hospice on your loved one. They're not improving. They are dying and we see that there is no hope for them to ever regain their health and be well again. So therefore, you have all these papers you have to fill out. You're crying. You're upset. You've been going through all kinds of things. Your nerves are shot. You've been driving back and forth to the hospital and back and forth to your place. If you've got pets, you've got to feed them. You've got things you've got to do. And there you are. And you're just, your nerves are frayed in the dying stage of death of your loved one. Well, they send you to a hospice house and you have to go over there. I went with my sister. You can take another loved one with you or whoever you want to take with you. And you go and you, you look and they show you around. They explain, you know, what's going to happen and everything. And then you sign the papers and you leave. 
you go back to the hospital and then they transport your loved one to the hospice house. Now we come to stage two, which is the death stage. You're all tore up. Family comes in. People come in praying, prayer, prayer going up, asking God for a miracle. You're doing everything you can do. Your loved one is lapsed into a coma and there is no communication. You're going back and forth. Meanwhile, the hospice people are coming in and giving shots of that stuff in through their uh, IV or in the thing that they have in the chest. And uh, it's, it's implant and uh, it's there. And they, they, they do it that way. So any road, you're seeing all this. You're going through all this. Then they call your attention to the what I call the potty bag. Now, a potty bag, if you don't know what a potty bag is, a potty bag is a baggie. Of course, it don't have this. This is a freezer baggie. But it's just a straight, no color bag like this right here. And it's down at the bottom of the bed, on the side of the bed, and they have it connected with a, uh, uh, oh, a catheter, and it drains the urine out of the bladder into that bag. Well, they call your attention to it, and they say, you see that? It's empty. The kidneys have shut down. Death is not far away. Boy, you walk in the floor. I mean, you're, you're just tore all to pieces. Well, after a while, in my case, it was in the early hours of the morning. It was 6.18. I'll never forget it as long as I live. And, uh, they come rushing in and they pronounce your loved one deceased. And now they, they have completed the death cycle. Now we go to the third stage. And that is what I call aftermath. You say, well, Grandpa, what is aftermath? Okay, you have to go, you have to get the funeral arrangements, the cremation, whatever you're going to do. I, I chose cremation. And uh, you have to set the funeral up. She had a very gorgeous funeral. I had to rent a casket. And they charged me $1,500 just for her to lay in that casket during the service. But I did it for my wife's sake. And you'll do it for your loved, loved one's sake. But you go through all that. Your guts are all tore up. You got to pay your money. And you go in there and they're not... Uh, you know, I mean, you're crying and everything else, but they're all business. You know, the funeral directors and all them, all they want's money. I mean, I'm sorry, people, but you're going to find out more and more about this when you go through it. All they care about is what's in your wallet. I mean, that's it. I'm sorry, people, but it is the truth. And then after you set it all it up, you've got all the arrangements done. Then you've got to go through the funeral and, uh, Everybody's notified and all of this. You get with a minister and you go, everything's all set up. And then you go through the funeral and you're bawling, crying. Your eyes are red. Your, your throat is sore. You're hoarse. And you go all through that. And then it's all over with. And you are alone. Everybody leaves. Everybody's gone from you. And you are alone. And then you will find out that people don't want anything to do with you. They avoid you like you're a Jonah or like you're a Jinx. Because you see, you pose a threat to people. Everyone you come in contact with, you say, well, how is that, Grandpa? Okay, they look at you and they say, oh, no, here comes that one that lost their loved one. I better avoid them because I'm afraid that I might lose my loved ones. See, you make them aware of their humanity. And you'll find these things out yourself. You'll find these things out. People that you and your wife or, or you and your loved one had to do with, all of a sudden they don't want anything to do with you. They don't want you coming around. They just avoid you because they look upon you as a Jonah 
or as a jinx. And they're like this, you know, King's X, you know, King's X, uh, uh, cross my legs and my fingers, uh, let's form an X. Uh, you'll find out. People are cruel. People are cruel. But you go on and you cry and uh, you mourn through a very long period. I did it for five and a half years of my wife that I just, I, I cried tears all the time, day and night. I'd wake up in the middle of the night uh, screaming her name. And uh, I went through sheer misery. And you also will go through sheer misery of the loss of your loved one. But those are the three stages of dying. So I just wanted to come on and let you know, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. I'm Grandpa Hickory, and all I'm trying to do is educate you on what I've been through on death and dying. I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye for now, and God bless each and every one of you. My prayers are with you and with what you are going through. God bless you all from Texas. Bye-bye for now. See you on the next video.